Hey there, welcome back. Uh, this is Shireen and it's another uh, video on uh, creating flats in Illustrator, but I'm going to break this up actually into two um, parts. So please make sure that you follow the next video on the playlist. Uh, we're going to create a little bit more complex flat. We already made our first sort of basic t-shirt. Today we're going to be creating a polo. Excuse me, that has a pocket and a couple different sort of elements of a collar. Uh, so we're working our way up into more complex flats. We're going to um, work on a little bit of a review, looking at those stitches. But this time we're going to be adding on um, an outline. So uh, working with our layers to kind of create an outline. Uh, and in the next part, we'll add on some more details, such as um, rib and creating clipping masks and looking at the buttons. So uh, let's get started. First thing we're going to do, if we recall, is we're going to go ahead and do a file place not a file open because we want to um, place the image file into the Illustrator environment. So we're going to do file place and the first thing I'm going to do is find my template. I'm not going to check link because I don't want to create a permanent link. I want to go ahead and embed. That means I'm going to just make a copy of my template and place it right into my document. And for right now I'm not going to check template because I'm going to go ahead and set up the template um, to my own liking. So what that means is I'll sort of set her up wherever she's going to be placed here in the center of the board. And it's up to me to decide on the um, opacity so I can make it as sort of light or dark as I choose. I could also, while I'm here, before I lock down that layer, if I choose, I can do Command R or Control R. I can create that center front line. And I'm actually kind of cheating because she already has a center front line. But that guide being on a layer and being locked down is sort of a smart strategy because it really keeps it out of the way. A lot of times people get confused when they're just starting because they'll try to start selecting different objects but they've selected the guide unfortunately in that grouping and then there's some uh, actions that are not available to them. So lock down that guide, lock down that first layer. Let's go ahead and call that one template and create another layer to grab our polo file place. Polo Okay, so the polo, as you see, is much bigger than our model. So for me to gauge the ratio of the relationship of the polo to the model, I just take, with the shirt selected, I'm going to take the opacity down. I'm going to hold shift to constrain the proportion, alt to um, create the transformation from the center. So the transformation from the center uh, looks like this. I think that's a good ratio. So that sort of looks, it's a little bit kind of big and I'm going to go ahead and lock that down as well. Let's call that one polo. And last but not least, we're going to call this one flat. So here's our first flat. So let's get started drawing. Um, I'm going to choose uh, none as my fill, black as my stroke. I'm working with a one point stroke. I have my tear off panels. I'm working with my pen tool and my um, reflect tool, but it's uh, together with my rotate tool. And remember with any flat, what we want to do is consider closed shapes. And we determine the closed shapes kind of roughly based on the grain. So in other words, the vertical grain, we see the front of the shirt is moving in this direction, but the grain for the sleeve would be following this direction. So that's a different angle, different closed path. So we want to create closed paths so that eventually when we fill, we can also fill with color, pattern, gradient, what have you. So that's going to be our technique. So I'm looking at this collar and what I'll be doing is I'll be creating a closed shape for every piece of that collar. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to select and I'm probably going to end up having to um, do a little bit of manipulation later. So because these two sides are not symmetrical. So for right now, let's go ahead and select on center front and work our way out and let's get started. I'm going to create that half of my flat. Okay, holding down shift so that that line segment is perfectly flush so that when it meets with its counterpart on the other side, it's going to be a nice smooth transition. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape to stop the drawing function. Let's take a look at how that looks and go ahead and bring back our background templates and information, we're going to go ahead and start reflecting. So reflecting this piece to the other side. So let's select this piece, select once on the object, select once on reflect, select once to on center front to set the axis, click anywhere on the other side, click on shift 
an option to make the duplicate release and you should have two symmetrical sides. And if that went a little fast, don't worry, I'm going to be doing it plenty of times. So select once on the object, select once on center on reflect, select once on center front, click and drag. Okay, so when we have our two pieces, and again, just a reminder, these are two open paths, but by selecting them both and right clicking, we can select join. When we select join, we can select with any other color. And as you see, it's one closed path now. And that's pretty great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring back none as my fill and continue drawing. I'm going to now set up my sleeves as separate closed shapes. So again, if I click right on this line, it's going to kind of think that I'm trying to add to this path that already exists. So I always like to click a little bit to the outside or inside. And then with my direct select tool, um, I edit it later. So it's going to look like this. Something like that. I can come a little bit to the inside. And again, because of the stacking order, I don't have to worry about recreating this exact angle to, ma to match my seam. I can go a little bit to the outside. I can actually create like this crazy sort of cap. And with my direct select tool, kind of make everything nice and flush. Now that looks great. Let's go ahead and see what this is all going to look like. Select once on your object, select once on reflect, select once on center front. Click and drag anywhere on the other side, hold down Alt and Shift, Oops. okay ready? So we're going to select on the object, click once on reflect, click once on center front, click and drag to the other side, Option, Shift, Release. Option makes the duplicate, Shift locks it into place. So let's take off the other layers. I'm just going to show you this is how it looks when we put in a little bit of that color. And we can clearly see that the stacking order, because of the um, sequence in which I drew, the sleeves now are in the front. I'm going to select that shirt and actually tell the shirt instead to come to the front. I'm going to select the object, right click, select arrange, and say bring this piece to the front. See that how that looks? So we're getting there. So let's take off our color and keep working. We're going to now take a look at this placket area. And again, so this is not symmetrical anymore. So we're going to have to kind of do this bit by bit. So the pieces that are symmetrical, I'm still going to kind of go in order, get those out of the way first. I'm holding down shift again right at the beginning. It's a nice practice to get that nice straight um, direction lines. shift to constrain. I can also at the same time if I like. A little bit to the outside. Okay. okay, so that looks like that. And again, I can use my direct select to kind of bring it back to A little bit back to where it's supposed to be, which is down here somewhere. Yep, that looks much better. I can also bring this a little bit so it really looks like it's sitting on that piece. So you can't, I'm sure you're not making quite a lot of sense of it yet, but these two pieces I'm working by the side by side. Let's go ahead and select this piece now because this is going to need a counterpart on the other side. Select once on the object, select once on reflect, select once on center front, bring out that reflection by clicking and dragging anywhere on the other side and holding Option and Shift or Alt and Shift. Select those two pieces and right click to join them up. Okay, what other pieces do we need? We've got a placket. We can go ahead and create with the rectangle tool that placket. Okay, perfect. My center of my placket is right on center front, so I'll just leave that as is. That looks great. I can already see that I'm going to have a hole here. You'll see what it looks like. I'm sure you're, if you're not quite used to working this way, you're not quite 100% still believing that this is all going to come together, but it is. I'm just making sure everything's really nice and set up. I'm going to need to fill this hole, um, so I'm going to be adding an anchor point. But for now, let me finish drawing the rest of my um, pieces here.
Okay, there's my collar. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this piece again a little bit more flat. Okay, so there's a lot that we're gonna talk about right now. But first, let me just put you out of your, let's reveal what this all looks like. I'm tracing bit by bit every single piece, but let me just show you what this is all gonna look like. Let's give it some color and we're gonna make sense of this mystery. Here's the collar that's flipped to the outside. So I'm just kind of showing that this piece um, looks like it's tilting out to the outside. Here's where I was seeing that hole, right? So I'm gonna go ahead with my add anchor point going to add an anchor point just there and with my direct select I'm going to close up that hole so now nobody can see that the other thing that I need to fix is that this collar actually is supposed to be in front of the placket so I'm going to right click and bring that to the front we're starting to look like we're in really great shape here I just also want to okay so now one of the next things that I really need to talk about right away is the stroke and how the stroke is managing around that corner. So right now it's making a corner, um, a pointed miter join. So what I'm going to do, and I also like to do this always at the end as well, I'm going to just select everything and in my stroke panel or under my control panel, either way, I'm going to say be, go around those corners with a round join. Did you just see that? right completely different and also when you meet the edge of a line a cap also have a round join so here's how that looks and I can bring that a little bit down it's starting to look like we've got our collar in place if I choose as well I can go ahead and with those handles kind of make this a little bit more round so it's starting to look like I've got a collar what am I missing I'm missing that back piece so if I want, I could also I could also do a lot of different things, but I'm going to add another piece here. Okay, so that's starting to look like the inside of the shirt is turned. There. Okay, so this is this piece turning outward, right? And I'm actually kind of veering away now from the original drawing because I'm trying to just kind of make these pieces all look like they're working together. Oops. So I'm using the white arrow for all these adjustments. Okay. Perfect. How does that look, right? So we can really see that piece turning out um okay i just need that back of that polo so i'm just going to show you this neat little trick it really doesn't need to be the whole back of a polo because nobody's going to see this piece i'm going to give it a different color so you can see and i'm going to do object arrange send to the back there's my back piece okay so that's starting to come together um our last uh skill for this video before we move on to a little bit more uh even more sort of little complex details is to just add a little bit of stitching uh, and, uh, and an outline. So actually, um, the shirt, the polo did have a pocket. So I'm going to add that pocket there again, adding a point with my, um, add anchor point tool right there in the center. My smart guides are helping to guide me. If you don't have your smart guides showing view smart guides should be selected with my direct select tool. I'm just going to pull out a little bit of that point. Okay. So I can adjust, of course, holding um, shift to select those two anchor points and bring them down. I can sort of set up the proportion of the pocket as I like. And once I do that, I'm gonna start adding some stitching. So uh, let's go ahead and to get that perfect, perfect curve, um, one thing that I could do is select the anchor point that's right in the center. The two line segments on either side are gonna come along with it. So I'm gonna do a uh, command C or control C to select. And I'm going to go ahead and do control F to place to paste in place. It's also under edit 
paste in, sorry, not paste in place, to paste in front. So I'm going to do paste in front. This anchor point that I selected brought along these two line segments. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up so you can see that it's the exact same curve. So if you want to get that hem, you just have to select if it's however many anchor points, but the line segments come along with the anchor points. So here's how this line looks now. We want to get it to be a finer stroke and we want to get it to be a dashed line. I think I kind of like sort of a two to one ratio, two dash one gap. And when I hit select, it looks like this. I'm going to get off, take off the template so you can see. If I want, I can also hold down option or alt to create a copy. So it's starting to look like a double stitch. That looks great. Let me do the same thing on my sleeves. Okay, just following along to that edge. I can do the same thing. If I want to get that double stitch feel. I'm just zooming in to bring it in a little bit closer. When I select them both, select them, click once on reflect, click once on center front, bring them over to the other side, click and drag, shift and option to bring them over. And let me do the same thing here on my pocket. Great. And option to make that second row. Oops. Option shift to make that second row. You see what happens when I don't hold shift. It didn't constrain the motion. So I've got all these pieces. We're going to come back and add in some rib and buttons in our next video. Our last step for right now is to create an outline. So follow along with these steps. See how it works out for you. I'm going to go ahead and create a layer and call that layer outline. So follow how we're going to do this. Only the pieces that make up the outline. I'm going to select and click and hold, click and hold, adding every piece that makes up the outline, not the plackets, not the buttons, not the back piece. Those pieces are reflected here in the layers panel with the indicate selected artwork, that little square there, that symbol. If I hold down alt or option, I can make a duplicate and move them into their own layer. I'm going to take the visibility off. You see we're on a different layer now. And to make them one shape, we're going to use the Shape Builder. Shape Builder. I just click and drag across to the different pieces. It's pretty cool, as you see. And it connects it all and builds one big shape. And that also helps us because it's less anchor points, less pieces to manage. So this is our outline. We can take off the fill. And if you see, we can kind of add can make it as big as we want but if we bring back our flat we can see that the problem is that it's obscuring the flat so actually what we want to do is have this behind the flat so I'm going to go ahead first of all and bring this down to a reasonable something like that and that outline we're going to go ahead and click and drag and pull it underneath the flat so now flat is above outline if I lock down my flat layer I can as you see increase or decrease my outline. It's on its own layer. Looks kind of great. Okay, so it gives it a lot more of that weight um, and it sort of indicates again the most important information first. We're talking about that type of the line hierarchy um, so that you can see sort of the silhouette um, gives it that nice bold line. It's a really nice touch. All right, so the next video, please make sure to watch uh, buttons and rib brushes and symbols. Uh, and uh, any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Good luck. Get a lot of practice in. Thanks for watching.